So warm welcome to everyone. Um, just a, for a little geographical note, um, I'm uh, broadcasting from Rehoboth Beach, um, where we just uh, arrived yesterday and we'll be here till next, um, next Saturday. And the joy of being at the beach, one of the joys is that things happen. You know, I remember either the last year or the year before, there was a barking dog next door, <laughs> barked all the way through the meditation. And so the great thing about the practice is that we, we, um, we show up for whatever is showing up, don't we? That, that uh, um, whatever's here is here. But um, we are, we're here and uh, it's very, probably in DC as well. And the DC air is, is pretty humid here, pretty hot today. But I hope everyone is, is keeping well, um, doing well, having a good weekend. So I, I did a little bit of an informal sharing about um, the center and IMCW, um, but if anyone's joining us, uh, this is our Sunday morning meditation and uh, offered by the Center for Mindful Living and Insight Meditation Community of Washington. Center, CML is part of the in, uh, larger Insight Meditation Community of Washington, but a lot of kind of autonomous and semi-autonomous things going on as well, as well as programs that are very much part of the, I mean, I think of it as all, all one big thing, but, um, but obviously it has its own identity and existence. And um, so welcome to, welcome to our Sunday morning class. Um, some of you, many of you will know that um, that the theme for today is um, is going to be is um, remembering those who've passed. Um, I sent a, a, a note out about that, but obviously, you know, not everybody probably has seen that. But um, just a little bit of a history about that. Um, um, my mother died four years ago um, in August of 2018. And I wanted the next, uh, the next, you know, a year after she died to, to remember her, um, to remember her life and her, her passing. And uh, we were talking, and Cassie um, kind of brought to my attention this the tradition that's very, very live in the, in the Jewish tradition of Yahrzeit, of um, yearly remembrance of 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 people of a person who's a loved one who's died, and and. Um, that inspired us to kind of begin, maybe make this a little bit of a tradition, um, but not, you know, it just happens you know, to be, you know, in this case, at my um, the anniversary of my mother who died on August 11th, um, 2018. But we've been doing it, we continu continued it online. Um, and kind of very much broadened it out to in, invite everyone to bring someone um, who is meaningful to you, could be a loved one, you know, a close family member, dear friend, um, you know, somebody, you know, an acquaintance some, or somebody you really admired in in or admired in public life, you know, maybe somebody known to many. Um, you know, you obviously think of um, Thich Nhat Hanh, who died a few months ago, who had enormous effect on on the lives of so many of us and so many millions of others around the world. Archbishop Tutu, another, and we probably name many, many. Um, you know, I'm, I, like many of you, I, I love music and, uh, you, know, mu you know, musicians, many, many of them are, many of the ones I love and probably many of the ones you love are folks from the 60s and 70s, not just because we're, many of us are from that era, but also because that was when the best music was made, he says, without being judging. <laughs> No, it is funny that the younger folks are still listening to the kind of things. You know, you think of Motown, for example, you know, and it's like, you know, will we ever, 
have such music again, you know, a decade and more of this, you know, the Supremes and the Four Tops and the ten Temptations and Martha and Vandellas and that, you know, I could go on and on and on. Um, uh, Lamont uh, Dozier of Holland Dozier in Holland died yeah, a week or two ago, you know, and then, you know, so many. And anyway, so, and just the invitation to bring both, both you know, certainly people very dear to ourselves, but also those who've kind of impacted us, impacted our lives. And, you know, I've invited, I invited folks to, um, you know, certainly in the CML community to bring, um, you know, remembrances, you know, photos. Um, you know, I have, I have my photo of my mom here and, and, uh, it's kind of a little bit shiny, but with a dear family friend. She's the one on, on this side with the darker hair. Um, that was from about 10 years ago when uh, we were in Ireland visiting the, the friends, the Hanleys, who grew up with us in London and they moved back to, to Ireland. And uh, I remember it well from, um, it was the time of the uh, Arab Spring. You know, we were watching on TV the demonstrations in Tahrir Square and um, anyway I've got various things I've got my my blue Buddha here um, which I got at Kripalu I, so something about the blue Buddha that I that I really like and then I've got my Yahtzeite candle it's a little bit further uh, further back there um, and uh, you know remembering my mother and others um, and uh, invite you, invite us all if, if there is somebody, whether you want to physically, you know, light a candle or whether you want to, you know, have a photo of, of a person or just or simply hold in your mind and in your heart that, that, that person, that being um, the invitation to do that and including all of our um, non-human sentient beings, you know, the, the pets we've lost, beloved animals we may have lost and even beloved trees we may have lost you know right now as we know that you know the sequoias are under 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 threat out on the west coast and um much is uh, much is under threat of the, of the land and um just holding all of that in our hearts as well so so all of that to say that uh, you know just that being the the theme um, for today, that uh, I invite. What what we'll do in terms of organize organization of it will be a little different from our regular Sunday class, but it'll be. Um, we'll begin as we typically do with a meditation. In the meditation, I'll include some reflections and some poetry, as well as you know times of silence and just being with our experience. And then um, we'll do, um, we'll have Emily lead some uh, movement. You know, we might have that as a little bit, depending on the timing, uh, immediately after the, after the meditation and before we get into sharing. But the main thing I wanted to do today, along with the meditation, was to invite um, all of us here or any of us who would wish to today to share and so to give as much time as possible for anybody who wants to, there's 70 of us here right now and, you know, probably some don't, won't necessarily want to share anything. Um, but we will, I hope we can have enough time for as many people as possible, hopefully anybody who wants to, to share either in the chat or, you know, through verbally, vocally, um, through, you know, um, through the Zoom um, to share a short reflection, obviously just given our numbers and the, the invitation is, will be that, that it be, you know, relatively concise, you know, maybe 30 or 60 seconds or so, you know, so that uh, we have as many people as possible and hopefully everybody gets a chance to share and everybody obviously can share through the, through the Zoom, um, no, through the, uh, uh, the comments, the chat. And then we'll, we'll have a little bit of time at the end for hopefully just a short ending meditation and some announcements today. Um, 
for upcoming activities. <coughs> Again, we'll keep those probably fairly brief today. Um, I do want to recognize um, Mark today, who's um, being the uh, commander in chief uh, guiding the spaceship. Um, this is part of Mark's last uh, day as uh, one of the hosts um, helping us um, with all of the um, access and uh, technical aspects. And um, so I want to thank um, Mark is going abroad for work. And so thank you, want to thank you for all, you, all you've done and all you've brought to the community and look forward to having you back as, as a guest. <laughs> As I was joking, we welcome the guests, <laughs> even if they're a crowd of sorrows, which you're not. <laughs> you're a crowd of joy. And thanking Margaret as well for today for doing the, uh, so we can maybe give a uh, thank you to, uh, to, to Mark and to, uh, to Margaret today. So, uh, thank you for that. And, and, and thank you, for, thank you for, to everyone who, who supports the class. Um, I'm going to mention something, but not in any detail today. We're, just to give you a little bit of a heads up in advance, we're going to hopefully be making some changes in simply and really in how we get into the class that has the goal of making things simpler, simpler and cleaner. And it helps in other ways as well. But it will involve a little bit of a change in how we get in here. And I know change can be challenging even for mindfulness and Dharma practitioners. And so we will need to kind of navigate that. But so it's just a little bit of a heads up. It's not a big deal. Hopefully it'll be fairly straightforward, but it'll be a new way. I, I've, I've used it before, the way of getting in for other courses I've taught, and I found it really, really helpful. So just put that aside. I'll talk more about that probably next week, I think, and in the next coming couple of weeks. But so just to all of that to say um, a really warm welcome to um, to everyone who's who's here today with us. Um, really appreciating the, uh, the the community, this community and the community in the larger larger sense that we we speak about it as the sangha you know there's there's sanghas and there's sanghas within sanghas and probably sanghas within sanghas within sanghas but we we have this what i i you know and, and i think so many of us love this center for mindful living community and which is part of Insight Meditation Community, IMCW, wider community, which has many, many more classes, over 50 teachers and affiliate teachers and um, uh, offering classes throughout the, the greater Washington area. And, you know, most of them online still, but um, soon, hopefully to go back more and more to in person. And then obviously the, uh, this sangha within the larger community of all of all of those who are on the path, um, on the path to awakening, on the path to, to abandoning and cultivating, abandoning the unskillful, I often talk about this, abandoning the, the patterns and habits and practices, behaviors and patterns of thought and mind that don't serve us, that lead us to suffering, you know, getting angry, complaining, judging, blaming, being harsh to ourselves, you know, all of the myriad ways, craving um, the, that we suffer. And so this path of abandoning what's unskillful and cultivating the wholesome states of, of heart and mind, you know, obviously the cultivating awareness, which is the heart of our practice, mindfulness, conscious awareness, um, compassion, kindness to ourselves and others, equanimity, just holding life's joys and sorrows with a, an even heart and mind. And so all of the qualities, the heart qualities, the, the practices, the factors of awakening, so many, so many qualities that help us, help us wake up help us open our hearts. So this larger community of beings, of, of beings on the path. And then 
even in the wider sense of community, the community of all beings, you know, even those who are not on the path, but are, you know, struggling with being this being human, you know, this human life, um, in, and including all beings without, without exception. Um, so, uh, you know, appreciating that really all, all levels, really all, all the dimensions of, of community. And, you know, just particularly um, feeling touched by, by just seeing all the faces, all of us here looking, you know, being able to be together in this way, appreciating that. And um, so we'll go in, we'll move into the meditation and share and uh, the reflection period. And uh, um, as some of you don't, I haven't looked at the chat yet, but um, I, in um, yeah, a lot of messages for appreciating Mark and grateful to Mark. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you all that you're sharing and 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 maybe just inviting well, during the time of the meditation. We'll focus obviously on the meditation, but invite you, you know, once the meditation is over, and you'd like to, if you'd like to bring someone into our circle of holding of care. Um, anyone, a loved one that you'd like to be remembered today, um, please feel free to just write whatever as much or as little as you like in the comments. And so we'll have that and we'll also have the, um, the live sharing, you know, people actually speaking. Um, so I want to, again, want to talk too much and not leave enough time for that. So let's, let's move um, into the meditation. And as we do, just do what is helpful to, to help you arrive, to let you arrive and settle and be here in a way that's relaxed and, and at ease. So sitting in a way that's comfortable. Let your attention, you might close your eyes if that's something that's easeful for you, comfortable for you. Maybe inviting the shoulders to relax. Letting your attention drop down into your body. Feel, you feel the body. You know, I spoke last week about the elements, the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water, and just how they, you know, if you use those, that framework, you know, the earth element, the hardness, the body, the buttocks pressing down on the seat, the feet in contact with the floor, with the hands touching each other or resting on the knees or the thighs or in the lap, just feeling that kind of hardness or the weightiness or the heaviness. Might connect with your breathing, particularly this, this the air element, the sensation sensations of the body breathing, breathing in, breathing out. And it may be sensing the way that your breathing helps you relax and soften, maybe feeling more, more a sense of softness. Maybe more a sense of space air, space. And feeling whatever energy is alive right now in the body, in the mind. 
maybe there's warmth in the face or around the eyes or in the belly. Just feeling the, the fire element, this warmth or coolness. And I was conscious, um, you know, thinking about this session, this class, and thinking about those we've lost, those who've passed, how, how the water element gets activated, you know, how very easily and beautifully they, you know, tears can come up behind in the eyes and behind the eyes and the the kind of there's a feeling of kind of wateriness down through the torso as well and it can be a kind of a lovely um warm soft feeling you know it can sometimes have some tightness and difficulty with it but just even experiencing just the sadness or grief as 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 the water element and in this, just this being with our direct experience, we just oh, this is the water element. This is, this is the 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 earth element or the fire element. And just that as a maybe as a helpful framework for as as the Buddha taught as for letting go of kind of identification with everything as I or mine, or my sadness or my anger, whatever. So letting the breathing, letting your breathing help you settle. <clears throat> Remembering the smile and how we can invite a smile and how that can help us relax and just open, perhaps open our hearts a little more. Breathing in, just know that you're breathing in. Breathing out, know that you're breathing out. Just letting yourself settle into being here. opening to whatever is present for you with, with kindness, with care. Particularly when the mind goes into, this shouldn't be like this, this should be different. And that very kind of visceral message that you know, almost kind of almost feels instinctual. I don't like this, I don't want this. You know, if there's a difficult bodily feeling or a, a memory that brings up something, we kind of tense up, we tighten up. You know, really feel the earth element, coming back to the elements. And then the invitation just to make space for whatever comes up and just meet it with kindness. So there, if there is anything that feels challenging or difficult, to see how it is just to breathe into it. Let your breathing help you hold this experience, this tightness or this 
angry thought or this wishing things were different. And if there's a feeling of ease or peace or well-being, allow yourself to feel it. Just let the feelings come and go, nothing to hold on to. But just to enjoy, as Mary Oliver says, let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. So this very, <clears throat> very simple, but not always easy practice of letting this moment be as it is and meeting it with, with kindness, with care, with acceptance. <clears throat> As Arjun Sumedho would like to say, likes to say, it's like this. Whatever is here, it's like it's like this. This is tightness. This is sadness. This is calm. This is joy. So turning our attention towards our direct experience, you know, what's alive, what's calling for attention right now, making space, making room for whatever is here. And if it's helpful, <clears throat> letting your breathing or whatever, typical focus thing you would, fo aspect of your experience you would focus on. You could let that be your anchor. You know, the breath is a very common and helpful anchor for our awareness. Just this breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, knowing you're breathing in. Breathing out, knowing you're breathing out. <coughs> I'll share this, <coughs> excuse me. share this reflection from Thich Nhat Hanh um, on the loss of his mother. And I know many of you are familiar with this and I'd love to come back to this. No death, no fear. The day my mother died, I wrote in my journal, a serious misfortune of my life has arrived. I suffered for more than one year after the passing away of my mother. But one night in the highlands of Vietnam, I was sleeping in the hut of my hermitage. I dreamed of my mother. I saw myself sitting with her and we were having a wonderful talk. She looked young and beautiful, her hair flowing down. It was so pleasant to sit there and talk to her as if she had never died. When I woke up, it was about two in the morning and I felt very strongly that I had never lost my mother. The impression that my mother was still with me was very clear. 
I understood then that the idea of having lost my mother was just an idea. It was obvious in that moment that my mother is always alive in me. I opened the door and went outside. The entire hillside was bathed in moonlight. It was a hill covered with tea plants and my hut was set behind the temple halfway up. Walking slowly in the moonlight through the rows of tea plants, I noticed my mother was still with me. She was the moonlight caressing me as she had done so often. Very tender, very sweet, wonderful. Each time my feet touched the earth, I knew my mother was there with me. I knew this body was not mine alone, but a living continuation of my mother and my father and my grandparents and great grandparents of all my ancestors. These feet that I saw as my feet were actually our feet. Together, my mother and I were leaving footprints in the damp soil. So just holding that in whatever way it resonates for you. If there's a loved one you're thinking of right now, just feel that sense of their presence with you. Felt, feel all of us being held together in this community. This All of us here committed to waking up, to, to live more wisely and kindly in the world. Committed to helping build and create a, a more peaceful, more compassionate, fairer world. <clears throat> And again, just noticing what is present right now. This moment without judgment, as Dorothy Hunt says, peace, peace is this moment without judgment. This moment in the heart space where everything that is, is welcome. If you're, <clears throat> if you're um, holding someone or more than one person or being in your heart, 
you might sense the possibility or or the perhaps the reality of that other other grief tends to kind of constellate around it. Um, maybe if you might even invite just a holding of your own sadness or maybe feelings of loss, but also all of others you've lost, you care about. <clears throat> and those be of all of us of how you know, the grief we feel is part of a much larger grief that we can, we can hold in our hearts with loving kindness. <clears throat> There's a, a song I love um, by uh, an Irish-American um, singer, Kathy Ryan. Um, the song is actually um, written by Dermot Henry. It's called uh, Slona Walia, which means really safe home. And it's, she sings it in both um, English and Irish, uh, Irish Gaelic. And uh, I'm just going to share, I'm not going to try to sing it, <laughs> but um, I'll play it here because of the technology, but um, just share the words. And, uh, Excuse my Irish is a bit rusty. The sun is down, the moon is blue. I think they know that I'm missing you. But time will heal this heartfelt pain as soon as I see you again. And then the Irish. Slán Awalia, Slán Gafal, Bé Macrisha Brishta, Gantu Astor. Nogo gasera rish, eshta bi sweet nu, aragol tak chak, omachri amak. And translates safe home, good luck. This heart of mine will be broken without you, my love. Until we meet again, listen and be thinking on the music that is coming from the depths of my heart. goes on. I see an island, you're on the, on the pier. I see you crying in the misty air. You look so lonely and there's no one near. Wish I could hold you, wish you were here. <clears throat> and then there's the, the Irish chorus again. And then look out your window when you're feeling blue. You'll see a blue bird looking in at you. Lay down your head, let yourself be free. Take in your deepest breath and sing with me. And it goes on, Slán Awalia, Slán Gafal, Amachri, Amach. So allowing the space of your own heart to hold whatever is present for you right now. And to feel yourself held in the, the lap of this community and the, the wider circles of Sangha, out to the Sanghas of all beings. Just feel yourself, any loss, any sadness, any grief, any joy, just held in this, in this field of caring. We'll finish um, the meditation with this poem um, from Patrick Kavanaugh, uh, Irish poet from County Monaghan. 
and it's called In Memory of My Mother. I do not think of you lying in the wet clay of a Monaghan graveyard. I see you walking down a lane among the poplars on your way to the station, or happily going to second mass on a summer Sunday. You meet me and you say, don't forget to see about the cattle. Among your earthiest words, the angels stray. And I think of you walking along a headland of green oats in June, so full of repose, so rich with life. And I see us meeting at the end of a town on a fair day by accident, after the bargains are all made and we can walk together through the shops and stalls and markets, free in the oriental streets of thought. Oh, you are not lying in the wet clay, for it is a harvest evening now, and we are piling up the ricks against the moonlight, and you smile up at us et eternally. So take your time coming back into the into the 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 group, the, um, the more outer orientation. Please, um, we'll move now into. Actually, I think would it be nice if if Emily, you could lead us in a little bit of movement if you're up for that, and then we'll come into the sharing after the after the movement. Okay. Yes, let me invite you to stay with the energy of your meditation, but rise and just feel your feet swaying from side to side, swaying your arms with you as if you were in water, and then feel the air against your arms allowing a slight twist, gently opening up physically to the space just as we've given space to our emotions in the meditation. And then open up wide. Inhale to lift your arms up. Exhale, soften your shoulders. And then grasp your left wrist in your right hand. Extend out to the right. Lifting up a little with the inhale. Exhale, softening in. Softening your shoulders. Being here. Inhale up, switch wrist. Extending over to the left. Opening up your right rib cage by breathing in. Exhale, soften again your shoulders, allowing this moment. And inhale up, float your arms down. Move your shoulders independently. Allow your feet or knees to move. Just allowing your body to move. And then Circle the other way. Now bring your arms up into cactus arms and holding the elbows up, drop your arms down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, down. Rising up, extending your arms out and then turn to look over your left palm. Lift it up, and on the inhale, switch to the right, to the left, and to the right. Dropping your arms down, roll your shoulders, circling, allowing the expression of the muscles. 
and circle the other way. Come to center. Now, I'm turning so that you can see the flat back maybe. And then place your hands above your knees, extending your back, feeling your pelvis, this pressing your feet against the floor, and then drop down. Whatever feels comfortable, releasing down to the pull of gravity, lengthening your spine, but pressing on your feet, energizing your pelvis to support the weight of your torso as you let your arms and shoulders and head drop down, allowing the breath And then place your hands above your knees, press on your feet again, softening your knees, roll up, tucking your tailbone under, stacking your vertebrae, lift your shoulders up around your ears and exhale, dropping your shoulders down and feeling this moment and then swing it out. Again, energizing the air around you. And if you're swinging one way, swing the other. Your dance in this moment. And come to center, place your hands above your head, palms together, find your center. Pressing on your feet again. Noticing, and then draw your hands to your heart, turning out to the group energy of kindness, and send your kindness to the earth. And as you exhale, we're going to lift our arms. So, whoosh! Good palms together, down to your heart, kindness to the group, and down to the earth. Whoosh. And now, hands to heart, take a bow. Thank you for your practice. Thank you, Emily, as always. That was lovely, lovely. And please um, feel free, anyone who would like to share anything <coughs> in the in the chat, in the comments, and uh, we'll save those. Um, and uh, you know, I'll I'll read them as much as you know feels feels right in terms of the the balance of the sharing. Um, but maybe just invite you to um, just open to what's present right now for you. You know, after the meditation and the poems, the reflections, the Emily's movement, um, just opening to what's here. And just feel if there's anything you would like to share in the group um, or in the chat around um, about um, any, any loss that you've um, experienced that uh, someone that you'd, you'd like to bring into you know the center of our of our um, of our group today of our community today to, to today um cassie thank you for that that suggestion um you know what what we might do let's let's see how it goes in terms of the sharing um <clears throat> i mean i think maybe what would be oh Cassie shared this with me directly. I hope you won't mind me sharing in the group because I think it's quite helpful. You said, um, you, you'd mentioned to Mark, it might be easier to split into two or three groups to share since there are so many people. I think maybe what, I, what would be good before we do that or decide what we do is just to check if uh, how many people would like to share um, 
as many, you know, and everybody can share obviously freely in the in the chat, so no problems around that. But how many think you you might, you know, you do or you might want to share something in the whole group? And then I think we can get a sense of of what is most, what would make most sense. I mean, if everybody wants to share, then it probably would make sense to to break into smaller groups. But if it's like 20, then maybe not. So um, you know, all know, you all have have reactions down at the bottom of the screen, hopefully, and we may have different things down there depending on our devices, but there are reactions. And one of those is, um, is a hand. Um, I think that's where you do it. No, those are raise hands, but yeah, raise, oh, raise hand, yeah. Raise hand is there. You can do another em emoji if you want, but particularly raise hands if you uh, think you are interested or might be interested in sharing just through your words as well as, uh, or, and or through the chat. And then we'll get a, get a sense of things. Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not a cast iron commitment that you have to, but if you might be interested, and then we'll we'll have a sense. So we're looking like about thirteen right now, and um, doesn't preclude others, but time might preclude things. So if you think you might, now would be a good time to to say it, and then we can use the time uh, depending on um, depending on uh, how many how many there are. So I'm seeing I'm seeing fifteen now. Um, 15, it says, and my thing says 15 participants have raised their, their hands. Um, so if that's, um, if that, you know, if that, that number remains fairly stable, then I think we can, we can stay in a, in a full, in the full group um, and, and share. Because personally, I would love to hear from whoever wants to speak and I don't want to miss anybody's. And that's the that's the downside of going into groups. There's an upside as well, but you know, it's kind of balancing those. So that's where where I would I would go. I think we've gone down to thirteen now. But anyway, so um, what I um, I think what I'm I'm going to suggest is that we uh, is that we I'll do a, I'll do a little reading of um, of what's been shared in the chat because only a few things have been shared so far, and then. Um, and then, uh, then we can uh, um, hear from people. Um, I think what I have, um, Deb says, thinking of my mum and dad and all their help when my two boys were young, they were so supportive. Thank you, Deb. And Ilian, I pray for my father, Charles Kenny, who died in eight, 18, 2001, wherever he is, in whatever form, to be happy, to be peaceful, and to be free from suffering. Thank you. Thank you, Eliane. Donovan, my father, William, is it Beauchamp or Beecham, depending on, um, you can let us know, passed in June 2020. Please join me in greeting his presence, which is manifest in my mind. Thank you, Donovan. Thank you for sharing that. And Kirsten, thinking of my dear friend Angel, who passed in May of this year. Thank you. Prana says, full group share sounds good. Ruan, mama died 36 years ago at 52, suddenly of a brain hemorrhage. She was a strict mother with tense relations with her children, who all seemed to be still having a hard time processing it and rarely talk about her. Thank you for sharing that, Ruan, and thank you for, thank you for, you know, it also triggers um, just a memory in me or not just a reflection that um, sometimes of the people that we're remembering, um, were, it, it brings up a lot of difficulties. And I remember Cindy shared with me after I'd, you know, spoken, you know, with all my gratitude from my mother, who kind of said, you know, I, that she was having had had a more difficult relationship with her mother, and that I know that's the case with with others. So, not to assume that everybody's relationship with the person who's died has been has been an easy one. So, I just want to mention that Emily, thinking of my father today, who died in two thousand and three on Labor Day, he taught me to see how things flow, to love the nuances in language, and how to fix things. Thank you, Emily. 
and Mark, thinking of my beloved father, Richard, who would have been 91 years old yesterday. Yeah, holding him in our hearts. Terry, honoring my colleague, Sheila Doyle today, who passed away this year. Thank you, Terry, holding Sheila in our hearts. Pamela, thanks. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Pamela, for sharing that. Karen, thinking of my beloved mother who died two months ago and my beloved father who died 51 years ago. I'm so grateful that I was able to accompany my mom in her transition from this life. She was such a resilient person and I hope to emulate her in my own life. Thank you, Karen, holding your mom and your dad in our hearts today.